मॉर्निंग एंड नमस्कार gives me immense pleasure immense pleasure to be here with you today thank you nagesh thank you the organizing committee for inviting me to share my thoughts i have been asked to talk about decoding market evolution market evolution in the retail industry what i'm going to talk about in the next few minutes is the way i see the landscape we see the landscape in hul and also the opportunities that exist for different segments of the industry here talking about evolution it's all about bringing forth a change it's a process of transformation with the benefit of hindsight you can always look at and say what is the change that has happened now looking into the future often it is crystal ball gazing but when you look at trends when you evaluate the trends you could paint a picture of the future difficult not so easy but clearly doable let me share a story yeah this is in 1894 victorian england they had a major crisis and it was the crisis of horse manure and they tabled a paper and the paper was all about how do you solve the problem of manure because england was growing rapidly and they thought if the number of people who are being drawn into horse carriages increases exponentially the way we look at it today the modern trade for instance here the issue would be what do you do with the manure it may well touch the moon so they set up a team to sort out the problem of manure but then we had james watt he invented the steam engine and he sorted out the problem while we paint the picture of the future we have to be cautious that there might be some disruptive innovation some big change coming into the landscape which will derail the way we have been thinking the future will unveil for us just picking up one of the threads which nagesh was talking about i would say that e-tailing could perhaps be one of the big change yeah the steam engine of the retail industry evolution of indian retail uh unilever in india we have been here since the late 19th century but in the current construct as hindustan lever and now hindustan unilever we have been in existence for nearly 80 years and we believe that the changes that we have seen in the last 10 years have been more than the changes that we have seen in the previous 70 years put together it's the pace of change the ferocity of change that has made the difference today now coming back to our shopping habits as a fast moving consumer goods company for us understanding a consumer and understanding a shopper is pivotal you can talk about whether we as indians we live to shop or shop to live the fact of the matter is that every household goes shopping 27 times a month yeah now 27 times a month but the purpose could be very different from main shopping to top up shopping our evidence indicates that one third of the trips and two third of the spends goes in main shopping and top up shopping main shopping and top up shopping the predominant channels are large groceries in the distributive trade and the modern trade channel yeah that's where bulk of the spend happens now understanding the shopper mission is pivotal and will be very key to developing the store proposition be it in modern trade or be it in large kiranas or in small kiranas the story of india and the story of indian retail are inextricably linked together yeah 12% of the gdp 8% of the population 
this is certainly going to continue into the future. If you were reading the Financial Times or the Economic Times, you might well wonder that is the DNA story over? Yeah, is the emerging market something which was just a blip but it has gone by? Yeah, is from brick to fragile five, is that what the change was meant to be? I think I would like to differ. The change which is happening today in the world, you cannot unwind it. The shift of power or the center of gravity from the west to the east is bound to happen. The time frame, the time frame might change, but the trajectory is not going to change. If we look at what McKinsey Global Institute talked about, that in the next 20 years, 2 billion consumers are going to come into the consuming class. When we talk about the consuming class, we talk about the population which has a disposable income of $10. Yeah? And we are talking about that the, consume, con, the, the private consumption is going to increase from $12 trillion to $30 trillion. Yeah? 75% of the growth is going to come from DND markets. Today the scenario is different. If you look at the world, one third of the world's GDP is in the DND markets. DND, the way we define it, is other than America's, Western Europe, and Japan. But if you look at the top 100 corporations, only 16% of the turnover comes from the DND markets. Unilever is different. For us, 55% of our global turnover comes from the DND markets. So very proudly, we often say we are a DND company. Yeah, but that is what the shape of the industry will be in the years to come. The 30 trillion opportunity might happen in 2030. It might happen in 2035. But I can tell you, it's bound to happen. In Unilever, when we look at our consumers, we don't just look at a socio-economic classification. We look at it from a lens of living standard measure. We call it LSM. Yeah? And LSM takes into account much more than your education and how much you earn. They look at consumer habits as well. And if you look at the change that has happened in the country, LSM 5 plus, yeah, which is the beginning of the middle class, has moved from 25% to nearly 60% of the urban population. LSM 8 plus, which is the upper middle class, has moved from 4.5% to 12%, and we estimate in the next five years, there will be about one-fourth of the urban population. LSM 8 plus, the habits are much more evolved, much more discerning, and they spend lot more money on what we today call as the discretionary categories. When we look at from a lens of how they spend, historically 70% of the spend used to go under food and the essential categories. There is going to be a significant shift as the country develops, as urbanization happens. And that is the reason why Channels of the past which were not relevant, like chemists, like fancy stores, are becoming increasingly important for us. In the last five years alone, they have increased the SKUs, which were hitherto they were not stocking, by 35% linked to the FMCG industry. And more and more consumers you will find who go in for health and beauty products would be buying from stores like druggists and chemists. The other big change, of course, is going to be the urbanization. The change that we are seeing and the change that is going to happen in the future is going to be more ferocious than anything we have seen in the past, save and except what has happened in the last decade and a half in China. Yeah? 